Bucks, go Bucks. Go Bucks, go Bucks. Go bucks, go bucks. First and go, we gotta tough it out. Get in the end zone and call a hot route. O line the beast, right down the street. You have Humphreys run right underneath. You know it's bucks ball, we got the hardest deep. Bring the pressure to the QB. You know it's routine, we got hard grease. Welcome to Tampa, welcome to Jericho. Go bucks, go bucks. Reppin' for my team. Go bucks, go bucks. You know we want the ring. Go bucks, go bucks. Welcome to the bay. Go bucks. Hello and good morning everybody to Buck and Blake Sports with your host, Mr. Buccaneer Blake himself. Let me try to do this live from the penitentiary. Try to get this out while I can. Um, because I wanted to wait till after the preseason game. I wasn't trying to follow Hard Knocks. Hard Knocks is self-explanatory. It's Buccaneers news. Uh, well, live Buccaneers get to know the players <clears throat> beyond the pads and on, and on the field and all that. So I'll let them do their part, and I'll just do mine. So Bucks, Buccaneers play the Brown, uh, the the Browns at home in a rainy, rainy game. I stayed the whole game till my buddies couldn't take it no more. It was a pretty boring game. Offense was uh, again inconsistent. Browns quarterback looked pretty good. Looked like he might be a good future for the Browns. <clears throat> Looking forward to that. Uh, James was moving the ball, you know, with the backup guys because none of the really the starters really played. Um, and we took a loss, 13 to nine, at the end of the game. Um, now that game was just, uh, like I said, the best way to say it is inconsistent. Again, like I said, starters weren't in, and when the starters were in, you know, week one, uh, we couldn't get in the red zone, so it seems to be, you know, having issues with that. And I think it comes from the running game. So I think who plays running back these first three weeks is going to be a very intricate part in how this team is going to do. Passing the ball is one thing, but you have to maintain or establish some type of run game. And I'll post a blog about that uh, later on the day. You guys will check it out and uh, comment and let me know what you think uh, if, it was your, if it was your choice. Um, Bucks acquired two defensive ends to the 90-man roster. Uh, one was a rookie from the Titans. I believe the other one's from the Bears. I'm not going to really mention their names at this time because it's not really important. Uh, I put a blog up today, well, yesterday, about Bucks missing out on Coney Ely. Uh, they put the bid in for him, but unfortunately, the way waiver wire works, waiver wire. It wasn't cut. He was waived, which means the wor the team with the worst record has first uh, bids on the on the uh, on the player, and the Jets happen to have a worse record than us, than the other teams. We were next on deck compared to other other teams that put in bids, but Jets had the worst record, so they got first bid and they picked him up. We could have used him. Uh, like I said, I put out the best player I thought available would be Mario Williams, depending on his asking price and if we just put him on situational passing, because he could give run and pass support. So. Only time will tell. They'll probably wait until roster cuts and see who gets cut uh, due to money situations or whatever type of stipulations will happen. So a lot of wait and sees. Uh, my concerns for this preseason so far, because we, the week four is going to be pretty much for the guys trying to make the roster. So I'm not really going to get into that and probably won't go too much into a week four evaluation. But I'm going to give you my reports after the first three weeks. My concern is running back. I don't know who's going to play. I don't really see anybody toting a load like that these first three weeks to give Jameis Winston a break. But I hope they surprise me. Offensive line. Everybody's like, well, their offensive line is depth. You've even said that. Yeah, I, and I stand by what I said. Um, had they had continuity, had they practiced and played with each other the whole time, I'd feel a whole lot better, but that hasn't happened. People have missed games because of injuries. I told you preseason and these injuries, that's why I don't care about the score. These injuries dinged up. Brent Grimes hasn't played the entire preseason. It's a lot of concerns. I'm concerned. A lot of everybody's so caught up with 
this offense, but offensive players and all that, but they're not paying attention to the small things that help lead to these bigger things that you're focused on. Just stay focused, stay humble. Um, offensive red zone woes, again, I, th- I think that comes with running, not really being able to run the ball, and then you can sneak passes into your tight ends. You're going to have to establish this run game. I'm not going to keep beating a dead horse here. You're going to have to establish some type of run game. And last but not least is is the pass rush is concerning. There was none, and there's no quality depth behind the main guys that are playing. I don't know when Jacquez Smith has decided to come back. That's why I said with his old teammate, Coney Ealy, would have been a nice addition to this team, which gives youth and um, a, a type of pa- a pass rushing specialist. So I'm really concerned with uh, with how our pass rush is going to be. Welcome to the show, Fred. Um, Jeremy Nichols is on the verge to be cut. Jeremy Nichols is the running back that was talking to Coach Uncle Snoop on um, Hard Knocks. Though, and Snoop said, most important line, those who knows the most plays the most. It's imp- You just can't come out there and you think you're going to shine over everybody else. Everybody is just as good as you. And you have to study the playbook. You have to study the things that you're told to do. And he's having problems with special teams. And he's hardly got any reps in game time situations. And I think that's due to not knowing the play. Mm. This coffee's good. Um, I think that's what it comes from. I think he needs to sit back, breathe, and take in the moment and take in what you're doing. Listen to the guys that are older than you, veterans. And I think you'll come out fine in the situation. But you're going to have to do your thing this week in practice and do your thing this last week in preseason. I hope you hear this. I hope you read and pay attention to the playbook. And you can stick around and um, contribute because we need you. We need all of you. We need all the players. We need everybody to just do their job. Um, that's pretty much what I got on that. I know you guys are probably waiting for me to say but my thing about the Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor fight. Not going to go into it. I still stand by what I said. Those two guys hustled everybody in America and made the money. And that's all I'll say with that. Um, and we'll end this as we always do. Like I said, I'm doing this live from straight from the penitentiary. Um, <laughs> those who know where I work, so that's why I say that. Um, we'll end this as we always do. You're the master of everything. What you do with your life, what you do with it, is entirely up to you. Uh, Thank you, guys. God bless, and uh, fire those cannons.